Leonie van der Mason started her extraordinary life of activism at just eight years of age. During the Second World War, she worked for the resistance, smuggling dynamite across the border. Since then, her activities have been directed more peacefully in her capacity as an environmentalist. In 1949, Leonie came to Australia and studied physical geography, geology, geomorphology, climatology and anthropology at the University of Western Australia. During her time in Western Australia, she lived with her family in the Jarrah Forest region and frequently holidayed in the Cary Forest further south. In 1970, she received a scholarship to do a PhD study at the University of Utrecht in Holland and to study soil science and integrated land use in Northern Ireland. In 1991, I promised to take my two daughters to Australia to visit all the places that they had grown up in. So we then went to all, visited all the places like uh, the Jarrah Forest and the Kerry Forest. And then we became very distressed because we couldn't believe how much in a very short time all these forests were devastated. When we returned to Holland, in 1992, the, the Dutch government made a decision of not buying any more tropical timber in, uh, from forests from the uh, areas such as Cameroon. So they intended to buy actually the Kerry and Jara from perhaps Australia because the Australian government made a lot of uh, well, a lot of, how you call it, propaganda, that they had the best forest management uh, forests in the world and that their Kerry and Jara were sustainably managed. So they came to Holland to try and sell the Kerry and the Jara. However, the Dutch government did not believe them and neither did all the NGOs. So... It, then it was decided that uh, somebody had to go back and do this real study of whether that was true or not. So because I have so many students, because I, I taught at Methodist Ladies College, and then I had many colleagues at the University of WA, um, they stressed that it was important that an independent researcher would do that study in the forest in West Australia to investigate the claim of the Australian government. What happened then was that I managed to find somebody to take me down the forest and the University of West Australia, the geography department, felt that it was a very important investigation so they backed me all the way. So that was, that was actually a very good beginning. And I did do that study for three months. And then I discovered that the study was so complicated that it would take a much longer time. After a study of five years, the Dutch government then decided that they had enough evidence that the forests were not sustainably managed. So it meant that they cancelled the order of six million dollars per year. Later on, uh, the same data were used for British Rail Track and they made the decision to cancel their contracts with CAM and that was an order of two million, uh, po actually two million pounds per year. So that means that the study I did had a very great impact on the trade of the timber from Australia to Europe. We then made that very good decision that the whatever they were doing in Australia, it was definitely not ecological sustainable forest management. Now, it is important to use the right scientific methodology 
for such an investigation, which is a multidisciplinary study and needs the cooperation of many scientists in Western Australia. Due to the political climate of that time, I made a promise not to reveal the names of the participating scientists. It is also needed that you have the cooperation of local people who, after all, are the best experts in the local situation. It is due to the total commitment of a handful of people that this study was a great international success. The study is conducted in the following way. You need to study the physical features, the soils and the climate and the hydrology, the salinity and the biodiversity, the flora and the fauna. And then you have to monitor the forest over a long period because that is the only way that you can really study the whole alterations of what's happening in the forest. Now, you n the methodology I used was to collect all the data, the history of the logging, and especially I made all the soil analysis. I measured the trees at the various locations, and I did the coring to establish the age of the trees. I'm now visiting the 107 blocks that they want to have reassessed. I will go into these forests because I've studied them before and I can compare them with the notes I took beforehand. And I've got all the data on the ecology and I've got the data on the flora and fauna. And now I can probably assess how much there is left. But I feel that what is happening at the present in the field is really shocking, I must say, and it is very depressing to see it. So my firm belief is that there should be no logging in native forest whatsoever. There is plenty of plantation timber, and I think the, they should phase out using native forest altogether because the threshold has been reached, and I think the forest at this moment is in a critical condition, the salinity is rising, and the temperature is probably going to be higher. And there is definitely, I've established in some areas, that the, the local rainfall is diminishing. So there is no way that these forests are going to be recovering because we cannot say that a tree that was a thousand years old probably and then be now a very small tree that it would ever, ever reach the maturity even in 500 years. So I think my message is really strong. Stop logging in native forest because otherwise the damage is irreversible and will never recover.